Good afternoon. I, I've been listening since early this morning, and um, I think I've heard it all. I think you have heard it all. My name is Sue Milam. I'm with the National Association of Social Workers, Texas Chapter. I represent almost 6,000 social workers in the state of Texas. And I was for this bill, and then I was against this bill, <laughs> and now I think I'm neutral on this bill. And uh, to stay true to my social work constituency, I have to say that we are in favor of any bill that offers health care to more people in this state. We will support whatever solution, however it can be done, that will give people the dignity and the ability to work and, and go to school and have normal, healthy lives. And right now, there are far too many in the state that don't have it. So I will, that's one thing that I must leave you with uh, from the social workers of the state. You just heard from Jan Fries, who represented the Texas Counseling Association, and she's right. We share a similar problem. We have lots of mental health care providers in the state. Um, some statistics show that social workers provide more mental health care than any other provider. We are paid, however, at 70% of the rate that is given to doctors and psycho uh, psychologists. We feel this is totally unfair. It's the same CPT code, and we ask that whatever, whenever you're looking at rates and looking at what Medicaid costs, consider that because our providers want to do this. This is the group, the vulnerable population, that's our group. Those are our people. We want to be able to do this, but it's putting us out of business. We recently did a study of our providers. We learned that um, they can't afford to do this anymore. Out of all the responses, a third of them had already stopped providing Medicaid services. Another 47% had reduced the amount they saw to less than 10% of their practice. That's not good, and it can be fixed by decent rates. The other thing I would like to say that maybe you haven't heard today, um, the people who are, can be helped by this are people you know in your lives. They cut your hair. They mow your grass. They serve you your dinner at night. Talk to these people. Ask them what are they doing for their health care for their family. I think it would be really important for you to hear one-on-one -on -one the, some of the struggles that people go through. My hairdresser had a brain tumor. She had to learn how to cut with her left hand, and, and she's older than I, and she's continuing to work because she's start, still trying to pay back that debt for that illness that she had. This, these, are not, these are not freeloaders. These are people who are working hard. They want to be able to fend for themselves. This is a hand up, and I ask you, please, please do the right thing for these folks. They really need it. Thank you. Uh, Representative Howard, thank you, Sue, for being here, and thank you for uh, also your statement of support of some kind of solution. I think, uh, you know, we have folks and groups that dig in and say it can only be a certain way on both ends and in between who say that. But I, what I think I have found this legislative session in particular and the people that are sitting up here is there really is a sincere effort to try to find some kind of solution, and it's not going to please. Not, not it's not going to give everything to anybody, but these the bills we're hearing today are really an effort to move forward, and I appreciate your recognition of that, and and I hope that more will see that because we need to keep advocating for what we believe we want to see in it, and and I appreciate that as well. But we also need support, I think, to move off the dime. So thank you for that. We are here to help. Thank you.